Last week, Marjorie Taylor Greene introduced the so-called Protecting Children's Innocence Act, which is an anti-trans bill that is explicitly eliminationist in its nature. So as Aaron Reed explains via Twitter, it isn't just a bill that will forcefully medically detransition all trans teens. It also targets trans adults. It includes a ban on health care and forced detransition for trans teens, bans insurance coverage for adult trans health care, bans higher education slash accreditation from teaching trans health care. Its aim is to detransition as many people, including adults, as possible by removing insurance coverage, targeting people who teach how to care for trans people and more. This would even bar psychology programs from teaching to recommend gender affirming care to trans people. It would bar EMTs from learning how to care for us. It would bar therapists from recommending the best medical care. It would bar medical schools from teaching surgeons and endocrinologists. So the goal of this bill is to legally and forcefully eliminate trans people out of American existence. This is the definition of an eliminationist piece of legislation, and it should horrify everyone. So what this will do is it would make gender affirming care to trans youth a class C felony for doctors with the penalty of 25 years in prison. Now, Marjorie Green designed this legislation this way because we saw the way that criminalizing certain procedures has had an effect on doctors in states like Texas, where abortion is banned. So doctors in, so doctors in the state are so terrified to perform uh, abortions or procedures that would remove the fetus, even if the woman has already miscarried, because they don't want to be accused of doing an abortion on a live fetus. So the same thing would be true here. So that way, even if they were to recommend social transition for a child, they'd be so terrified to do that that they lose their medical license and face penalties of 25 years in prison that they would just not offer the care altogether. That's the goal of this bill. Now, at the time that I record this, it has 14 co-sponsors. It started out with five, but that number is growing, and we'll talk about why it's growing in a moment here. But just imagine what it would be like if some lawmaker with no medical degree decided to create legislation that would ban doctors from treating diabetic patients with insulin. Well, I say that it's illegal to treat somebody with insulin. It's preposterous, right? But that's similar to what this bill would do because the recommended treatment for trans youth is gender affirming care. Now, what they try to do is fearmonger and claim that that means castration or bottom surgery, but that's not actually happening. Oftentimes, it just means social transition. And when they reach older ages, if they show persistent gender dysphoria with years of counseling, they can get access to puberty blockers and eventually hormone replacement therapy. But bottom surgery is not performed on minors. In some instances, some doctors will do top surgery on trans boys, but it's when they're in their late teens, they're almost adults, and it's relatively rare. But really what we talk about when it comes to trans youth and the treatment for gender dysphoria as approved by medical professionals and the consensus of physicians and pediatricians is social transition and HRT. But they're saying, no, you can't treat these children in the way that it's recommended by doctors and professionals. You have to treat them in the way that we say. And that means ignore it. But this isn't the first time that Marjorie Green has shown how ignorant she is when it comes to medical issues, when it comes to treating COVID-19. She's against vaccines. So this imbecile is trying to impose her will on doctors when she knows nothing about this. Like, imagine you're a teenager, you're going to school, and you've been able to socially transition. And all of a sudden, you're forced to detransition. Wear clothing that you don't feel comfortable with. Identify as the gender that you don't feel comfortable with. I mean, this isn't a one-to-one -one comparison, but if I were forced to shave off my beard, grow out my hair, wear feminine clothing, dresses, I would not feel comfortable in my own skin. But this is effectively what they are forcing young people to go through. Yeah, it's despicable, it's gross, and this will lead to an increase in deaths of trans youth by suicide in the event this were ever to pass. Now, the reason why the bill is gaining a little bit of popularity, it went from five co-sponsors off the bat to 14, is because she went on the most popular news show in the country to promote it. Tucker Carlson, take a look. But when it comes to gender-affirming care, which is really child abuse, this is actually an assault and it's child abuse. And this, this practice should never happen. It's so disgusting and appalling and it's an embarrassment to our country. You see, I'm one of those that believes the Republican Party is only worth 
um, worth being a, a true party, worth deserving of the people's votes if we are willing to stand up and stop horrific things like child abuse and like so-called gender-affirming care, which is really genital mutilation. It, it's puberty blockers that cause chemical castration. Uh, teenage girls actually having their breasts chopped off uh, teenage boys being castrated. This needs to be illegal, and I'm introducing a bill called Protect Children's Innocence Act, and it would create a law that would cause it to be a Class C felony for any person involved in so-called gender-affirming care. That means genital mutilation surgery, that means hormones, that means puberty blockers, anything involving any, any youth under the age of 18, because these kids are too young to make these awful decisions that will affect them and will be permanent for the rest of their lives. Uh, you, you cut the breasts off a little girl, you should go to prison, of course. You perform a, a medically unnecessary hysterectomy on a little girl, you should be in prison. So, I mean, I assume you're going to get every Republican vote for this. You know, I should have every single Republican co-sponsor, but unfortunately I don't yet. I only have five co-sponsors. I'm talking to all of my colleagues and urging them because, Tucker, let me tell you something. This is a referendum on the Republican Party. When, when we take back the majority, if the American people elect us, we, need to, we have a lot of work to do. Not only do we need to impeach Merrick Garland, we need to clean out the corrupt FBI. We need to hold the Democrats accountable and defund all of their climate garbage. 87,000 IRS Army. But there's one thing that we have got to do, and we're not even a party worth deserving of the American people's votes. If we cannot protect children from this horrific child abuse and create this to be a felony, because this practice has to end. It's the, ca it's the kind of things nightmares are made of, and these are yeah. monsters under kids' beds that are doing these horrific things to them. Yeah, well, you, you can't sexually mutilate children, sorry. And no. I hope you will send us a list of every Republican who's too cowardly to affirm the obvious. Once again, you can't sexually mutilate children, period. No. So thank no. you, Congresswoman, for what you're doing on this. We appreciate it. Thank you, Tucker. So first of all, it should horrify everyone that they want to turn this into a litmus test. And second of all, if they are so concerned with uh, so-called sexual mutilation of children, why do they only focus on trans youth? Because that's not even happening there. But there is arguable mutilation of children's genitalia happening in the United States frequently. In fact, between 1980 and 2010, nearly 60% of newborn infants have been circumcised, which is a procedure where the baby's foreskin is surgically removed, which is an irreversible procedure still common in most areas of the country, excluding the West Coast. Where's the outrage for this? Does this not qualify as genital mutilation of children? Well, there's no outrage for this because Tucker Carlson actually defended this procedure and just pay close attention to the reasoning as to why he supports circumcision. I can't even believe that he said this after making the argument we just watched him make, but take a look. You're, you're saying to me that there are opponents to female circumcision. Look, as you know, there's a lot mutilated. of research. I don't want to get into the circumcision debate on mm -hmm. men, but, there's, but re should. there's research. Okay, well then there's research that shows there, there are profound and medical advantages in that. There there's no research that shows there's any medical advantage to female First of all, mutilation. that research, research is contested. So he supports circumcision because there is profound medical advantages to circumcision. Oh, okay, so he's trusting the science here, right? Well, here's what the experts say about gender-affirming care for trans youth. Doctors Matuk and Wald of Columbia University say gender-affirming care not only saves lives, but denying this medically necessary treatment to trans youth endangers their health and well-being. And this is the position supported by the vast majority of experts, by the medical consensus, the American Academy of Pediatrics, the American Medical Association. So all of a sudden, when it comes to trans people, Tucker doesn't support the profound medical advantages. Why? Is it because he's a hypocrite? Sure, I think that he knows that, but it's because this isn't about science or genital mutilation. This is about hate. He hates trans people, and he wants to forcibly detransition all trans people. He wants to eliminate them from society. This is what that's about absolutely make no mistake about it this is why he wants to make this bill a litmus test for all republicans and when we're talking about genital mutilation it is not an accurate comparison to gender affirming care for trans youth because again what we're talking about here oftentimes with really young trans people is social transition let them live the way that they want to live wear the clothing that they want 
But when they're older, perhaps they can qualify for puberty blockers. Perhaps they can qualify for HRT. And by the way, puberty blockers, these are given to cis girls to stop them from developing too soon as well. So would this bill also ban puberty blockers for young girls? It's just, it's such a hateful, cruel bill. The fact that they want to make this litmus test tells you how dangerous this party and their ideology is. Now, there's other things that Marjorie Greene said that I want to point out here. She called gender-affirming care child abuse, and she called it genital mutilation. Um, okay, but again, what about circumcision? She claimed that teenage boys are being castrated. That's not actually true. She hasn't provided us with any evidence that this is happening because she's ignorant. She doesn't necessarily have to give you the evidence because they've been sufficiently fear-mongering about gender from care to trans youth for, for long enough that the viewers on Fox News, they automatically assume that what she's saying by default is true. When in actuality, it's ignorant. It's medically illiterate. And what she's saying, like her anti-vax views, it's all not supported by the overwhelming majority of the scientific and medical community. Now, let's go back to the claim that Tucker Carlson made where he suggested that every Republican who's against this isn't a real Republican. This is the most popular news show on the program. So if it's not necessarily the most popular bill right now, wait for it, because he's going to use his platform to generate support for this type of legislation. So that way, in the event Republicans ever were to take back control of all branches of government, this is what they'd want to do if they take back the House. I wouldn't be surprised if this bill passed within the next couple of years. We don't have to worry about this in the short term. Because this bill wouldn't get through the Senate if Democrats held the Senate. This wouldn't be something that Joe Biden were to sign into law. But what this tells you is the trajectory that this party is on by trying to force other Republicans to go along with this eliminationist and frankly genocidal bill against trans people. And it should horrify everyone. Even if you're not trans, this should horrify you that the rhetoric has reached this level where they're trying to eliminate a portion of the population from society forcibly forcing them to not live the way that they want to. Whatever happened to freedom? Shouldn't we be allowed to dress the way that we want to, live the way that we want to? They make it seem as if trans youth come out on Monday, and then by Friday, they're getting bottom surgery. And I've made this point before, but even if you're a trans adult and you qualify for bottom surgery, you can't just go get it easily. It is incredibly cost prohibitive. We have a broken healthcare system where healthcare is not free at the point of service. So it's not even an easy procedure for trans adults to get. But yet they're pretending as if this is something that's a common phenomenon and children are getting castrated. That's just not true, but it's fear-mongering that they're using to drive an anti-trans agenda. And it's gotten to the point where it is very, very dangerous. We are in genocidal territory here, and people need to pay attention to this because this is only the beginning and it's going to get a lot worse within the next couple of years. Mark my words.